Greetings. This is part of the uh, Husea series. Today we're going to talk about the books of creation. And that first uh, item in there is, is dealing with the creation of Ra as Ptah. And here we have a depiction of Ptah. And sometimes he's referred to as Lord of the Blue. He is holding the Waz uh, staff with the Jed symbol at the top and the Ankh. And so we're just going to proceed in. So the creation of Ra as Ptah. It is Ra, it is, excuse me, it is Ptah, a form of Ra, the most great, who has given existence to all the divine powers and to their essences through his heart, mind, and tongue. And as we see the Medu Nature, uh, which uh, Westerners call hieroglyphs, this is how you would write Ptah uh, in Medu Nature. This is the P, this is the H, excuse me, this is the P, this is the T, this is the H. And when you look at this, and we're going to talk about this a little later, it looks like a um, DNA symbol. So it is Ptah, a form of Ra, the most great, who has given existence to all the divine powers and to their essences through his heart, mind, and tongue. Thus, it came to pass that the heart and mind and tongue ruled all the members through the teachings that Ptah, Ra, is within every body as heart and mind and within every mouth as tongue. All the divine powers of all humankind, of cattle, of all creeping things, of all living things. And he thinks as heart and mind and commands as tongue, whatever he wishes. Pata, Ra, company of divine powers are before him as teeth and lips and are the teeth and lips which establish the names of all things from which came forth Shu, the powers of light and air and tefnut, the power of moisture and brought into being all the company of divine powers themselves. The seeing of the eyes, the hearing of the ears and the breathing of the nose are communicated to the heart and mind and the heart and mind cause all perception to come forth. And what the heart and mind think and wishes is declared by the tongue so were all the divine powers created and the company of divine powers completed. Now well, let's pause right here. Pata is a, is a form of the creator. And what he is telling us and what we're, we're being told in this passage is that creation comes about by having heart, mind, and in sync and having your tongue in sync. Sometimes, the reason why we're not able to create what we want is because our heart is over here somewhere, our mind is like leaves blowing in a windstorm, and our tongue is saying one thing, but we're doing another. And so in order to create, we have to have heart, mind, and tongue all in sync in order to create. Indeed, every word of God came into being through that which the heart and mind thought and the tongue commanded. Thus, by means of the word, you know, in the Bible and John uh, 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word is God. He was with God in the beginning. So here again, we're talking about the word, but not necessarily a word like we understand it in English and the various languages, but actually the vibration, the vibration caused everything to come into being. So it says, thus, by means of the word, all faculties and qualities were fashioned and created, which furnished all food and yield all nourishment. Thus, justice is given to one who does what is loved and punishment is given to one who does what is hated. Thus, is life given to the peaceful and death given to one who violates the law. And thus were made every work and all crafts, the action of the arms and hands, the motions of the legs, the movement of every member of the body according to the command which was conceived 
by the heart and mind and brought forth by the tongue, which creates the usefulness and action of everything. It is said then that Pata, Ra, then is he who made all and created the divine powers. He is the Tatajan, the risen land, who produced the divine powers from whom everything came forth, food and provisions, divine offerings, and every good thing. As we pause here, if we look at that word pita, it is very similar to ju pita, and it is very similar to the word Peter. And many of you that are uh, familiar with the Christian uh, canon, you know that it is said that the church was formed on the rock, which Peter was. Upon this rock, I shall build my church. Well, our ancestors many thousands of years before said that Pata was the risen land who produced the divine powers and from, from whom everything came forth, food, provisions, divine offerings, and every good thing. Thus it was recognized and understood that he is the mightiest of all di divine powers. And after he had created all things and all divine utterances, Pata Ra was pleased and rested. And again, we can see the origin of the Christian and Judeo-Christian uh, canon where it talks about, and the seventh day after everything was created, the creator saw everything was good and rested. Uh, just a few examples of how Pata was uh, depicted uh, in Medunetra and in uh, statues. So here is Pata again, and sometimes he's painted blue, or sometimes he'll have a blue cap on. He's always uh, depicted in mummy form, and he's holding a staff, which we are calling the, uh, the Jed staff. Uh, it has um, the uh, Ankh on top, and it has the, um, uh, the Jed, which was known as the backbone of Wasir or Osiris. And uh, the, the whole staff looks like kind of like a grounding rod. And uh, many of the netters are, are holding what's called the Waz staff. Here he is again, Pata, and, and here his name is written in glyph, and he's holding the Waz symbol again. Sometimes he's depicted as a green uh, uh, netter or divine principle. And here we see this, this glyph here, which means beautiful. Sometimes it means harmony. And here's the face. And here he's associated with uh, Aset. You can see the, 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 the glyph for Aset. And this glyph here, right here, is a glyph is per. Uh, per it means the sky. And if we look at this X, we can see the origin of the Confederate flag I can't take credit for uh, recognizing that. Uh, uh, one of our good friends from in the African diaspora, one of the great teachers uh, that goes to Kemeth uh, many times a year, uh, Astro Kwesi points that out in his African origin of Masonic order. So even uh, the Confederate flag has its origins in an African uh, setting. And this is what we were talking about earlier. One of the uh, glyphs for Pata, the H, is very similar to DNA. And so our ancestors along the Nile, the Camites, the Comitians, they were very familiar with the concept of DNA, which was discovered rel relatively uh, recent in terms of Western culture. Here's Pata again. He's holding that Jed staff. And the Jed staff represents stability. And here's a close-up of him. And many of the statues uh, that have the full lips and broad noses, the nip, the, the, these are always chipped off, unfortunately, to try to hide and disguise the African appearance. But looking at the face, you can tell that this is a depiction of a black man uh, as the creator. Here we see Pata, 
And here's his name again, written in glyph. But this time he's standing on a symbol for ma'at. Ma'at represents truth, justice, order, righteousness, propriety, harmony, balance, reciprocity. And so in one of the uh, passages in the Husiya, in the books of knowing of creation, it says, Pata is, is talking, he says, I found no place on which to stand. I laid the foundation through Mat. One of the things about Mat, it's so regular uh, that you can predict 10,000 years from now what time the sun is going to rise and set because everything in order of the universe is, is, is in such a precision that uh, you know you can you can you can judge how the seasons are going to go how how the moon is going to uh wax and wane etc and so this and so here the creator is standing on this symbol i thought this was interesting uh here we go here we are uh we just passed the uh, uh academy awards and they were giving out the oscars but we can look at the ancient statues and see where Oscar got his, um, uh, 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 why Oscar looks as he does. Because Pata is portrayed in this way again, he's holding the Waz staff, uh, the ceremonial beard of the Netaru. And then on the other side, we have Wasir or Asar or Osiris dressed in the same way. And uh, many of you are familiar with the uh, biblical passage, uh, Psalms 23, and it says in there, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And here back many thousands years, years before that was written, we can see the, the rod and the staff uh, that was carried by Wasir, who was the judge uh, at the end of the uh, journey for people at the weighing of the hearts. And here, Oscar, it's not, it's not uh, too much difference in the way that they're depicting and in the way that our ancestors depicted. And so, in conclusion, that, that concludes our passage of, of Pata as Ra as his description. I hope that you will join us for our future uh, presentations on the Husiya. Uh, books of Knowing of Creation, and all the other books in the Husea. These books are used by the Wose Community Church of Oakland and Sacramento. We have four main holy books, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams, Stolen Legacy by Dr. George Jim James, 2000 Seasons by Ayikwe Arma, and one of our main books is the Husea, Selections from the Husea by Dr. Malana Karinga. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you will uh, be well. Ankujab Sanev, life, prosperity, and health. Live up.